Hey, Lauren Shepard here, Los Angeles luxury real estate broker. Today, I wanna to go over building your own custom home in LA. So I wanna start by explaining the benefits, which are a bit obvious, but I'm gonna go over them very quickly. Uh, one, you obviously have a lot more flexibility and customization when you're building your own home. Developers and investors today that are building new construction homes and selling them to the, to the mass market are trying to appeal to a large number of buyers. So they all tend to look pretty much the same. They all tend to be very on trend, um, beautiful, but they all look the same. Secondly, you have the potential to have some built-in equity. So most uh, land and uh, properties that you can build on are priced to leave some equity in there because these are generally only sold to developers and investors and they need to have a profit margin for it to make sense to them. So if you're an end user and buying a property, there's some potential there to have some built-in equity at the end of the project, whereas that developer would you know, then sell it for a profit and make money on that property. You then have that built-in as your built-in equity. Uh, the third benefit is that you have a lot more quality control. So you see the whole entire process from start to finish. You choose who the contractors are, um, people, you know, the architect, they're all people you trust. So there's a lot more quality control there. You see what goes into the house from start to finish. There's no guesswork and you know that you are getting a quality product. So there's four different types of properties you can buy in Los Angeles to build on. The first one, obviously, vacant land. So vacant land is any raw land that has no type of upgrades. So there was no pre-existing structure and there's no utilities on the property itself. If the property is on a street with other homes surrounding it, it's very likely that there's utilities in the street and you can just bring them to the property. That's a cost of anywhere from 10 to 30 or $40,000, depending how far those utilities are away in the street. Um, so there is a cost to that, obviously. If it's vacant land and there's not even a road leading to the property, that's obviously going to add a lot of cost to your build and a lot of time. So vacant land, even for developers and investors, tends to be the most risky um, for this very reason. It takes a lot more time to get approvals. It takes a lot more time to get the utilities in. Sometimes you have to do street upgrades to please the city. So just know that vacant land, while it's totally doable, you have a lot more customization options. It also tends to be a lot more expensive. So the second type you can get if you don't wanna deal with the utilities and that sort of stuff is what we call a teardown. A teardown is a property that is old and abused and is not really worthwhile to an end user and really not even functional anymore. It's functionally obsolete, what was what we call it. Uh, and it's, so the property is better used as vacant land um, to be torn down and demolished. These obviously are better than purchasing vacant land because those utilities are already on the property. And I believe generally you can get approvals for whatever you want to build there a bit quicker because there was already an existing structure there. In fact, if you don't do a completely complete demolish and you use some of the existing structure, it can be even faster. So you have that option as well with teardowns. Also, they're a bit easier to come by mainly because vacant land is almost non-existent in LA anymore uh, because LA is such a huge city. Um, so teardowns are a great option for that. The third type of property you can get in Los Angeles is what we call RTI. This generally is either vacant land or a teardown property that has plans already approved by the city in place. So. There is a long waiting period to getting your architectural plans approved with the city. Uh, whatever house you're going to build, obviously, you know, it needs to be approved. That can oftentimes take as much as a year. So an RTA property comes with that approval already in place. This um, means that you can start building as soon as you close on the property generally. It's obviously cheaper because there's no holding costs or carrying costs associated. Um, for that first year while you're getting the approvals in place. Um, the downside to this is that the floor plan for the most part is not changeable. Um, you can maybe make some small edits with the floor plan, very few, but again, that would then take another few months of approvals from the city. So overall, you're building that house, whatever it's been approved for, but this still allows you an immense amount of 
flexibility because you can still choose your own finishes, your own landscaping. You can somewhat change the exterior style of the home. Maybe it's a bit too modern for your liking. You can make it feel a bit more farmhousey. Um, you know, as long as heights and, and, you know, walls are not changed, you can somewhat make some manipulation there. So it still gives you that option for the flexibility and the customization. It takes out a lot of the risk and the cost with holding that property while you're getting approvals for the property and a lot of the headache. That's really the hardest part is finding the architect, the engineer, the contractor, and, and making them all come together to, to get an approval to build something there. And the fourth kind of property you can buy is what we call a pre-completion new construction. This really isn't so much a custom home. Pretty much you're getting whatever the builder wants to put at that property. Um, but it allows you the option to, again, change some of the finishes. So maybe you're sick of the white countertops and the white oak flooring and you want something a bit different. This allows you that option. What you're doing is essentially finding a builder who's about six months or maybe even just three months from completion of the property. And you're telling them, hey, I want to write an offer on this. Will you accept it? I'll release some money to you. You generally have to do that because this is a risk for the builder to customize the property to your taste. So they want you to put in some risk too and release some non-refundable amount of money to them. And then you put you go into escrow on that property. And then during that six month, four month, five month period, whatever it is, while they're finishing the home, you choose those finishes and they install them for you. So that also gives you the option to get a bit of a custom home without having to again, go through the headache of doing all that. I will say in Los Angeles right now, this doesn't actually happen that often. And it's generally because builders find it a bigger headache to have to deal with buyers who want to do that. <laughs> um, and it ends up costing them more because now they're putting in change orders for finishes uh, or it's just more risky if for whatever reason you decide to back out, even if you've released the money to him, now he has to sell the property as it is, as you wanted it. And it may be the case that you're the only buyer who wanted to buy it, you know, with those finishes in. So now he may lose money on the property. So not a lot of developers do this anymore, um, but it is possible. You could find someone. If you make it really enticing for them, they're open to it. So how do you buy these types of properties? Generally, it's with a construction loan. Construction loans tend to be a bit more costly. you paying anywhere from five to maybe eight or nine percent on the loan. However, it's a short term loan. You use it to purchase the property and then you have the ability to make draws on the loan to pay for the actual build cost. Um, and generally an experienced contractor knows how to do this and plan for this. Um, but just know that you're paying that five to nine percent as you use the money. Um, so there is that cost to purchasing a property. There is a little workaround if you're purchasing a teardown. If you are purchasing a teardown and you need a year to get your plans approved for what you want to build there, you could technically rent out the house and by doing that you, you could rent out the house and you could use maybe a 3 or 4% fixed term loan until you need that construction loan. This could be an option if you want to save some money on that interest and you have the money to pay for the construction costs out of pocket. I wouldn't recommend this if you have to get a construction loan anyways. Um, if you're gonna get a construction loan, just get it for the purchase too, it's much simpler. So then at the end of the construction loan, once you're done building, you refinance that into a 30 year fixed loan, whatever loan you would like to continue to have on that property, most people get a 30 year fixed. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do as you start looking for properties is to check the feasibility. Obviously, you wanna make sure that you can build what you want on that lot. The easiest way to do this, and there are some variations to this, but the easiest way to do this is to just know that you can build 45% of the lot. So if you have a 10,000 square foot lot, generally you can build 4,500 square feet. Obviously this changes depending where it is, depending how much hillside there is on the property, depending if you're allowed to do ADUs in that area or basements, or if you get a design bonus, uh, that all changes by area. You wanna use this rule of thumb though when you're just looking online, that's the best way to determine it. Then you want to determine the numbers. So if you're looking at a property, obviously you want to make sure that whatever you're building is not going to cost you more than what it'll be worth when you're finished. 
the fastest way to do this is to take the purchase price, add on the estimated cost per square foot to build. So there's a few ways to determine this. If you're building something on a flat lot that has the very basic cabinets, flooring, etc., you can estimate $250 to $300 a square foot. If you're building something that's going to be, you know, a 10 million property when it's done, something very high end, and it's on a flat lot, I would estimate probably anywhere from 300 to even as much as $600 a square foot, depending on what kind of finishes you put in, right? If you're putting an Italian kitchen and, you know, designer flooring, all of that is going to cost more. Um, the more higher end you go, higher price per square foot. You'll also want to take into account if it's hillside, depending how sloped it is, you're going to need more retaining walls, more caissons, more excavating, uh, and all of that can add on. You know, severely hillside properties with almost a straight down slope, you could even estimate as much as $1,000 a square foot for a property like that. You can get more into this when you're talking with your architect and your contractor, but that's also a general rule of thumb. So. You want to add together whatever that cost per square foot is going to be and then add on the, the lot price and try to make sure that it's at least 5% less than whatever that finished product will be worth. Um, and again, your realtor, your agent should know how to you know, determine this for you. Um, if they don't, get a different realtor. <laughs> but, um, but generally an agent should be able to give you that information up front and that should be able to rule out most properties um, and narrow it down for you. So who are the people that you need to talk to initially? Well, your agent should really be able to tell you if this is feasible or uh, if the numbers would work to build on a certain property. Um, they should be able to at least guide you to that point, to the point of bringing your architect, engineer, and your contractor. So I would say before you write an offer, you wanna have your architect chosen um, and potentially your, your contractor. Uh, those two people are, if they're experienced in the Los Angeles area, they'll be able to look at it and say, yes, if you want a home that looks like these photos that you showed me on this particular property, it'll cost you this to build. Or just by eyeing it, I know there's a lot of hillside, you're not gonna get 4,500 square feet out of it, you're gonna get 2,500 square feet out of it. Um, and again, there are there is actually a tool that you can use that your realtor should know about uh, called underbuilt.com. You can go to that and type in the property address and it'll tell you right away based on hillside and and all of these things, what, um, you know, what about how much square footage you can build. And it's actually very, very accurate. Uh, but um, generally your architect or your contractor can look at the property up front and kind of know, yes, we can get to this square footage or no, we can't. Um, and it would probably cost you an estimation of this to build based on the type of home you're looking for. Um, so once you talk to them, once you take them to the property, you can go ahead and write an offer. Uh, you want to do your due diligence on the property, you'll include your architect, you'll get an engineer, you'll get what's called a soils or geology report, and you'll also get a survey of the property. All of these things will tell you exactly how much you can build on the property. If it is feasible to build on that property, how long, you know, then you can make the determination if it's going to need a lot of excavation, grading, caissons, that'll determine your time length for how long it's going to take you to build on the property and will really give you an accurate estimation of those costs. So again, if you're working with a real estate agent to help you find a property to build on, they should absolutely know these things. They should know how to go through the process and uh, should be able to connect you with the best possible people for building. And the very last thing I want to touch on is the types of firms you can work with. So there are firms that are the architect, project manager, contractor, design, um, and even, you know, they have in-house engineers. So you could pay a firm to do all of those things. Um, and again, your agent should be able to recommend those to you, or you can go in and find your own. So you can find an architect. Your architect will probably recommend to you a contractor. Um, you can pick your own designer if you really want help doing finishes, but there are firms that do all of them. Um, I would also recommend if you are a, if you're just someone who wants to build for yourself is to find at least a 
contractor or an architect that will manage everything for you. Um, you don't want to have to be overseeing the contractor at all turns or the architect at all turns. Um, someone that can really do the project management and organize all of the people together is what you need. Um, so that's pretty much the, the, the short version of it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments. You can also find me on my Instagram at Lauren Shepherd Group. Please remember to subscribe and watch out for my next videos.